for the chairs there are quite a lot of parts needed um, and a lot of them are of similar size so it might be a good idea to just cut the parts for one chair at a time or to have little pots and have each piece in a different pot um, or you can even just um, have a piece of paper draw some squares on it and write in it which bit is which and it'll just mean that you don't end up sticking the wrong piece in place but I'll try to um, name the piece as we go along okay here comes the cutting list now we're going to begin by constructing the front section of the chair so take the two front legs and we want to make a pencil mark seven millimeters or if you're working in inches that is nine thirty seconds of an inch from the bottom of each leg and just place your ruler alongside and just make a small pencil mark so seven millimeters or nine thirty seconds of an inch like so and then place the legs side by side and you want to take the two front supports and I've just got some glue here on a piece of card and I'm going to apply it to each end of the support and then just lay that there and the second one as well so the top support wants to be flush with the top of the leg or level with the top of the leg so just push it against that left hand leg and then the lower support wants to sit just above that pencil line we've just made and you can use the lines on your cutting mat for this as well just to make sure everything's going together square and then bring the other leg in and attach it at the top first and then the bottom again so that, that lower support is just above the pencil line and push those together until the glue begins to take make sure it's all flat I'm just going to remove the excess glue and then just carefully slide that across and that can be left to dry we're now going to prepare the back of the seat so take the seat back panel and make a pencil mark in the centre of the top and bottom so the shorter edges so just a faint pencil mark in the centre and then quarterly so to the centre of, of each side and the same at the bottom and then turn the piece onto its side and we're going to score grooves so lay the ruler across so it's just below the pencil line and that will allow for the thickness of the screwdriver which we're going to use to make the grooves and you just want to use that very sort of corner of the tip there so make a faint groove to begin with and then just go along a couple of more times just scoring deeper into the wood and you've got a nice groove and then do the central one same way again just lightly to start with and then apply slightly more pressure and then turn the piece around so that the ruler doesn't rock off the back and do the remaining groove and then take a piece of sandpaper and fold it into a crease and then just work that crease along each of the grooves just to smooth off the edges take two of the back supports 
and make a pencil mark in the centre of each. Like that. And then just place them on the worktop like that. Apply glue to the top and bottom of the seat back panel. And then place that so that the pencil line is just above the central groove. Glue those together and the same at the bottom. Like so and then just carefully press those together. And again just slide that across your worktop and that can be left to dry. Okay, so now take the two back legs. I'm just going to make pencil marks um, for placement of the supports. So the first one is seven millimeters from the bottom, and that's nine thirty seconds of an inch. And the next one is thirty point five millimeters again from that bottom of the leg, and that is one and thirteen sixty fourths. And the final one is 44 millimetres, and that's one and three quarter inches. So seven millimetres, 30.5 millimetres, and 44 millimetres. And if you're working in inches, that's nine thirty seconds of an inch, one and thirteen sixty fourths, and one and three quarter inches. So do that on both. Of the legs so where this lowest pencil mark is the bottom and we now just want to very gently round over the top of each leg so I've just got a piece of fine grade sandpaper here and you just want to curve it over the end and it just makes a nicer finish Curve over each side. Don't need to go too rough, we don't want to take away from the length of the leg. But just round it off the top. Do that on both legs. And then lay the legs down there and you want to take your prepared um, back panel and then a back support which is the thicker piece and a lower support yeah lower back support just checking there what I'd called it okay so apply glue to the edges of each piece Just lay that down there. And then use the lines on your cutting mat just to help you with this part to make sure that everything stays straight. And begin with the top piece and the bottom of this lower support should sit just above that highest pencil mark so that just press that against the left hand leg and the next piece sits just above the next line and then this bottom support just above the lowest line And then just hold that leg and then bring the other leg into position and just press it into place making sure that everything sits 
above the correct pencil line. And then just very carefully press all that together. And then that piece can be left to dry. And again, push it along your work surface rather than trying to pick it up. And I've got one here that I did earlier. So that's now dry. And then you can just erase the pencil marks on there or sand them off. And I also held the piece flat against my sandpaper and I just sanded it just so we've got a nice flush back piece and then you want to bring in two of the side supports and again they're the thicker pieces and then the two narrower bottom side supports here and we're just going to glue these into place level with the one that's there at the back so just apply glue to one end and then you're attaching it to the leg and it's just slightly narrower than the leg this piece so to the inside of the leg so then you've got a tiny little overhang on that other side like that and get them as upright as you can but we can still maneuver them into position before we fit the front part so don't worry if they do tend to bend inwards. Okay, the second one now on the inside of the leg. Okay. And then these two again level with the bottom support at the back there. These will, these are the same width as the leg, so they'll just go right to the side of the leg. The final piece. just going to very carefully remove the excess glue and then again this piece can be left to one side to dry and then we can attach the front of the seat okay so once the supports have had time to dry apply glue to the end of each one and then bring in the front section and again I've erased the pencil marks um, from the front of there and I just sanded it on the back to make sure it was completely flush and then we're going to attach so that the top support is level with the top of the leg so that bit should all be flush and then this bottom support the bottom of it should be level with the bottom of the front support so the side one is slightly narrower and it should sit flush with the bottom of this front one and I'll just turn around and just very gently just maneuver everything into place okay so the top one is flush this bottom one is level with the bottom of the front support and then just use your finger to make sure it's all sitting nice and flush quite tricky this to do without sort of it all sort of smashing apart and then just very gently just press it all into place
and that piece again can then be left to dry and then that will be ready for painting. I do give it enough time to dry um, before you begin to paint. Leave it that way. And then I've got one here that is completely dry. I'm now going to fit the seat part. So we need to cut a section from each corner along the narrower edge and that's so that it can slot around those back legs. So make a pencil mark first of all three millimetre from each side or one eighth of an inch and then that way so we're making a, a square a three millimetre square at each corner And then whenever you're cutting a section from a piece of wood, always cut against the grain first and that way you won't split the wood. So I'm cutting this piece first, just with the very tip of the knife, until I can feel that that's gone all the way through. And then I can cut in the direction of the grain, like that. The same on the other side, against the grain first, until I'm all the way through, and then get rid of that piece. And then just double check that it fits properly, and if not, you may just need to cut I think it's just a little bit narrow on that side, but I'm going to cut a piece away from each one so that it remains central. So I'm just going to cut a tiniest slither from there. And this can just be down to um, a slight misplacement when attaching the back. So don't worry if it doesn't fit. I'm just cutting a tiny slither away from there as well. fit it again. Hopefully this time we're there. I'm just going to do a tiny little bit more from this side. And it's always better to be a tiny bit um, narrower than you need it to be because then when you varnish this piece or paint it that adds a bit of depth so you'll get a better fit then. Yeah so I'm happy with that fit now. And I've got an even overhang at either side. So if you find that it doesn't fit, don't just cut away from one corner. Otherwise it'll it'll sit slightly sort of skew with. So always sort of cut a little bit away from each side. And then we're just going to shape um, these edges and the front edge of the seat. Again, just to make it look a little bit nicer. So hold it against your sandpaper and just very gently sweep it towards you, bringing it into an upright position. And that way we're just rounding off that front edge, but without taking away any of the depth. And I'm going to do that on each side as well, just very lightly. And then you can just tidy that up with a scrap of sandpaper and come over these corners as well, slightly round them off so they don't look so sharp. I'm going for the two-tone effect again so I'm going to varnish just the seat part so I'm not going to attach that yet but if you just want to paint the whole seat you can attach and you would just apply glue around this top part of the chair and along that back and then you would just fit that into place and you can use um, some 
clamps or a little bit of masking tape to hold it into place while the glue dries. But like I say, I'm going to varnish mine. And you need to varnish on both sides because obviously you've got a, a clear seat there. And, the, and I'm going to paint the seat now as well. And then we'll come back and we'll attach, attach it. So once you've painted your chair and finished your seat, just before applying glue, check that the seat fits nicely to the chair. And it, it may just be that if you've applied varnish in these back sections, that adds a bit of thickness so that it might just be a little bit tight. So you just have to sand in there um, to remove the ex excess varnish. So once you're happy with the fit, you can apply glue around these top parts. And press that down again just use another cocktail stick to remove any excess glue Because we're not covering a, a really large area, you can just use a couple of clamps, one at the back and one at the front, again going underneath this, this strut here. But just check your sides and if you had sort of any lifting, you could put another clamp in if you need to. And then that can just be left to dry. And there's our completed chairs and these are sort of to go with the table project that you can also find on my channel but you could just make one of these to go in a in a kitchen maybe do a little display on it it's a nice little chair just on its own I hope you've enjoyed this project and if so please do subscribe to my channel because there's lots more to come and thank you for watching